Snowcon was Australia's first fully transistorised general purpose computer designed and built by a team led by David Wong, Kevin Rosland and Murray Allen. It became operational in Cooma, New South Wales in 1960 to help build the largest civil engineering project in Australia, the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Scheme. The project started in 1949 and had 100,000 people working on it. It consisted of the construction of 16 major dams, 33 turbines generating 4,100 megawatts of electricity and was completed in 1972. Well, Snowcom was a general purpose machine. It was built as a research project at Sydney University, funded by the Snowy Mountains Authority on the basis that they got the machine when it was finished. Snowy Mountains uh, uh, project, of course, was a, a very major project in Australia involving the construction of a large number of dams and power stations and uh, the authority realised they needed a computer to do some of the calculations and that's why they funded that as a research project at Sydney University. The Snowy Mountains was a sort of a place that grew by itself from a start. It ended up being much bigger and much better than they thought. There was a direct connection between David Wong's report that it's the Snowy Mountain Authority may as well build a general purpose computer rather than a new, another version of ADA. They were thinking of building another version of ADA, which they were going to call ADA 2, but that got scrapped on account of Wong's recommendation. And so they commissioned Murray Allen to set out the design of a machine which became known as Snowcom. David Wong started work on his master's and then his PhD to develop equipment they could use for a very complex setup of power production. Murray Allen's contribution was sketching out the process of, of its construction, generally taking on his role as a PhD supervisor. He's one of those people that was very influential and quietly moving around in the background of, of different PhD students of different work. Murray Allen supervised David Wong. So he looked around to see how quickly we we could put a general purpose computer together, found a publication which was relevant and did that. So all I had to do was translate it into my circuitry. By the time that program got underway, Murray Allen had left Sydney. He was already in Adelaide by then. CSIRO had had a committee to look into the future of computers and uh, they decided that um, there was little future for computers because they knew how to make them already. I went to Adelaide because after the decision by CSIRO, there was nothing to do much in Sydney. Wong was to look after the detailed design and construction of the machine, which was again copied from another valve computer. It was a small computer using vacuum tubes made by Libriscope. Wong was going to make use of Murray's experience with Ada on making use of transistor techniques there were a number of others worked on the project. John Todd, Lindsay Bellamy, Jacques Lamond, Bob White, Bob Dakin was involved in the software. We were looking for a, a manufacturer who would make the modules for us and wire them up, and that was Kevin. He's a very good technician. Oh, he's a very intelligent and very creative worker. He worked with David Wong. Construction techniques used in Ada were suitable for other computers, and they were used in, in Stockholm, certainly, and in Arcturus. Because it worked well. It was always reliable. David looked after it all. Yeah, the Snowcom machine was based on the architecture of the LGP-30, an American valve computer. He was a general purpose computer, but of first generation. And so Murray's and David Wong's task was to convert that into a transistor version using better memory technology, digital circuitry, and it turned out to be a lot faster and smaller. Murray Allen tells me that in his first year at the University of Adelaide in 1959, he spent a lot of time travelling between Adelaide and Sydney to assist with Wong in the progress of that Snowcom construction. Snowcom design would have been from about 1957 and construction was 1958, 59 and 60. Then it was delivered, of course, in September 1960 to the authority in Cooma. 
I think Snookum had about 130 modules. Initially, I was uh, simply doing construction of those modules, and then gradually I became familiar with the, the logic of the machine and did some of the design, but most of the design was done by Murray Allen and David Wong. One of the things that made Murray Allen's modules successful with his adoption of the D-sub connector. And that set the minimum size of his uh, circuit boards and that turned about the right kind of thing to do too because nearly all the sub-logic components of his designs could be fitted on those individual boards. I probably built almost every module in SOCOM. We built extra modules, yes, especially if they were similar modules. Some of the registers, of course, had multiple modules of the same type, and yes, we'd have spare modules of those. Those modules were very useful at, at the time that Murray was building his computers and from the late 50s into the early 60s. Later on, I did a little bit of the design and some of the, the circuit design for the input-output equipment. We were constantly searching data sheets for transistors that were faster or more reliable. And of course, gradually it went from germanium to silicon transistors because they were more stable. I'm not sure who wrote the simulator for Celiac, but it, it fairly accurately simulated the, the functions of the Snowcom computer. Yeah, we had a, an accurate model running on Celiac so that you could test things. And so it was possible to develop the programs for Snowcom using that simulator. The hardware followed later. John Bennett used the Ciliac computer at Sydney University to simulate the instruction mechanism of Snowcom and tested the Snowcom instruction set against that architecture. But it meant the software could be written at the same time as the hardware was being built. Bob would periodically come across and test a program if we had it running on, uh, on Snowcom, on the real hardware. He would uh, develop the programs on that simulator and then test them finally on Snowcom when it was finished. I think the Snowcom machine had a very simple operating system, like I guess you could test that out on Ciliac. And it was commissioned, I recall David Wong and I driving to Coomer in September 1960 and installing it in the head office and getting it working after a few days and then keeping it running for several years after that. Because the Snowy Mountain Scheme was such a hallmark project in Australia, it is probably the largest thing any government had done in Australia up to that time. There wouldn't be a person in Australia that didn't know about it. It attracted a very large number of post-war immigrants who had trade and engineering backgrounds. The community of people that built this Snowy Mountain Scheme came from all over the world. They all have fond memories of that to multicultural experience. The Snowcom computer was an integral part of its fame. Snowcom, in modern terms, a very slow machine. It would run day and night on some a river analysis or engineering programs down at the authority and it would finally get the result even though it took a long while to do it because it was a serial machine and the memory drum was the the major factor in its speed and of course that was very slow. That was a, a serial drum. And so it had a lot of latency in the rotational speed of the drum. The speed of the drum was not critical in that sense because the the drum provided the timing for the machine. Driven by the clock track on the drum, so it didn't matter if the drum varied a little bit in speed, everything was just slave to that to that track. The memory in Snowcom was totally the drum. There was no other memory. Even the, the registers, the main registers, were recirculating on the surface of the drum. Uh, so it dealt with one bit at a time as those bits came off the surface. The drums were, were designed and manufactured within CSIRO. In fact, uh, it was wise not to be around when they were tuning it up because the, the civil engineers reckoned the best way to get the heads close to the drum was to move them in until they screamed. To have manufactured a semiconductor memory in those days would have cost a fortune in transistors. Core memories were just becoming available, but they were not used in Snowcom at all. The paper tape reader was a Ferranti reader, and I remember it used to give reading errors, and I did design and build a different reader that ran much faster and was not prone to errors so much. The printer on Snowcom could only print the hexadecimal characters. That's 0 through 9 plus A through F uh, plus carriage return. A later version which I built could operate all 44 keys on the IBM printer. Typically a failure would be a diode that had failed. Uh, the OA70 series were used in Snowcom. The transistors were the service barrier transistors made by Philco 
and they seemed to have a ceiling problem, so the gain would, would drop uh, and uh, not be sufficient to, to function. Sometimes it was bad joints, solder joints would fail and we'd uh, finally find those as well. Generally, we could uh, re do the repair within one day. There was terrible flights to Cooma, which was a DC-3, non-pressurised. You'd get there with your ears aching, the plane unable to land because of fog, and have to return to Canberra and, and go down in a bus or a car to Cooma. They were some pretty <laughs> rugged experiences. Well, I think Snowcom had a useful life with Snowy Mountains construction which was a construction that involved lengthy periods of time for constructing the many tunnels and dams that were built. It certainly saved a lot of calculation and mundane work that was required for the river flow analysis, which was one of its major jobs, and some engineering design as well. I think Snowcom's legacy is having been the first transistorised second generation general purpose computer built in Australia. It was famous for that, and, and it was an exemplar of how it was possible to construct transistorised computers in Australia in, in a very timely and efficient engineering fashion. It was a good project, yes. I think it led to David Wong setting up a good teaching department in Sydney University. I think it was just fun. Its legacy is that it really was some pioneering work done by an Australian group back in the 1950s and, and early 60s. And it's a pity that there wasn't a further development to commercialise that product, because it certainly would have been commercially viable. <laughs>